Hello, everyone. Um, I just wanted to do some quick introductions before we get started so that you know who you're going to hear from today. So I'll start with myself. Um, my name is Liz Rivera, and I'm the graduate recruiter. And I'll let who's joining me today introduce himself. Hello, my name is Satish Nargunkar, and I'm the assistant dean for the MBA program at Robinson College of Business. All right, so I will go ahead and get started. Um, so let's see. All right, so today we're going to go through the entire MBA program. You'll learn about the curriculum. You'll learn about the team that that's behind it, the cost, everything you need to know about the Robinson MBA. So let's start off with the team. So here we have the entire team that's dedicated to your success as an MBA student. And I'll start from the left to the right. So on the left, you have our other presenter, Dr. Satish Nargunkar. He's the Associate Dean for the MBA program. Then you have myself. I'm the graduate recruiter for the MBA program. I'm here from the moment that you express interest into the program until admissions. Um, then you'll start working with our student experience team, and that's going to be Jermaine Clark, as well as our graduate career advancement center. Um, and that the head of that is going to be Lauren McDowell. And then last but not least, you'll work with your academic advisor that uh, will help you in choosing your classes. And that's going to be Vanessa Jones. So here we have a really great illustration to show you our fall 2023 graduate student community. So as I mentioned earlier, we have about 1,492 students. And we have a great mix of students with about 46% male and 54% woman. We have about 37% international and 63% domestic. Now, our student population is very diverse with an average age of about 31 years, and that's going to be reflective of those people that come back to school after retiring from their first career path, as well as students that are coming straight from undergrad. So, and then on the right hand side, we have our entire list of our graduate programs that we offer here at the Robinson College of Business. So now I'm going to give it away to Dr. Satish Nargankar to talk a little bit more about the MBA program. First question on your mind is probably why the Robinson MBA. So if you're here uh, wanting to learn a little bit more about it, typically you consider a graduate program because you wanted to enhance your career in some way. And to do that generally, generally requires three things. One, of course, is improved skill set that you get in your classroom. Uh, the second is certain skills that you can develop outside the classroom through co-curricular or extracurricular activities, things like communication, leadership, team building, and so forth. And the third is, of course, being able to network with executives and alumni who are likely to hire you. So Robinson College allows you or affords you many opportunities to do all three of these things. So I'll briefly mention a few, starting with our curriculum. We have an advisory board made up of executives that tell us what the strengths and weaknesses of our curriculum are on the basis of the people they've hired in the past. So they can tell us what our graduates are good at and what they lack. And on that basis, we are constantly innovating within our curriculum. And that innovation continues all the time. Uh, but every few years, we do sort of a major overhaul, which we have done in this year, over actually over the last two years, but it will take effect uh, starting the fall of 24 when we, launch, when we launch our new, more streamlined MBA program that's only 42 credits that increases your speed to completion of the degree. Uh, but we'll talk about those details later on. The point is that we are constantly in touch with industry to figure out how to tailor our program to what's needed currently. Uh, the second thing uh, about that curriculum is, of course, that it has to be delivered by faculty who are the best qualified. So if you um, take a look at our faculty, we have we are a fairly large college. With, uh, 200, roughly 200 full-time faculty, and some of them teach doctoral classes, some teach undergraduate classes, some teach in the MBA. 
key criterion for selection of the faculty for the MBA program is that besides being experts in their field, they also have typically some strong corporate ties. They're either consultants currently or have been, or have some sort of a tie up with a, with a corporation for their research. And the reason for making that, using that criterion is that an MBA is a professional degree, a very practical degree. And we want to make sure that what you are learning in the classroom is tied directly to what how it can be applied in the business world. And all of our faculty are chosen for their ability to do that. And here, are, just as a sampling, we gave you four names. Since these days you can Google anything you want, you can try one of these names and see what you find out about them. Right? You will you will see that they are very well recognized nationally or internationally in, in their fields, and they are all excellent practitioners too. The second thing we I talked about um, extra extracurricular activities, but also before that, we are we are talking about your ability to network. So in terms of networking, given how large a school we are and how long we have been in the business school, uh, in in the business of granting MBAs, we have tens of thousands of alumni. And even if only a few thousand are active right now, they're mostly in a lot of them would be in the Atlanta region. And the advantage of simply being in Atlanta is that among the Fortune 500 or 1000 companies, I think at least 30 of them have their headquarters in Atlanta and scores more have a strong presence here, even if their headquarters are not here. So Atlanta is a major hub for business. And um, what that means is that in all those buildings that you see, uh, there are executives who are Georgia State alumni. And when they are looking to hire people, they know exactly what kind of qualifications a Georgia State graduate comes with. And that's a big advantage when you're looking to an advance your career. Here is just a smattering again of some of our alumni who have reached the top levels. And I'll pause at for five seconds, or you can pause the video here for five seconds, or as long as you want, and look up one or more of these names yourself to see who these people are and how they are related to Georgia State. And this is just a very small sample. So the idea here is to simply let you know that of course, after you finish your MBA, you're not instantly going to become a CEO or a president but that a long-term goal should be that you can reach the highest levels possible in an, in an organization with, a, with an MBA from Georgia State. So in, in order to now talk about signature experiences or extracurricular activities, I'm going to turn it back to Liz. All right. So here we have some of our signature experiences that you would get to experience as a student within the Robinson College of Business. Now you can be a part of our study abroad trips. And we have here a picture of one of those. This one was in Toulouse, France. Um, additionally, we have what we call the, the Panther Immersion Programs. Now these programs provide you with immersive and experiential opportunities that accelerate your professional development. And they have the potential to transform your careers. So here we have the Panthers in the district. And this is where students get to go to Washington, D.C. to expand their professional network and get exposure to that industry. Now, we also have Panthers on Wall Street. And you guessed it. This is where students get to go to Wall Street in New York City. And then to the right, we have pa Panthers in the Valley. And that's going to be where students get to go to Silicon Valley. Additionally, we do provide company site visits to different companies. So this one here is for the Mercedes-Benz headquarters that we have right here in Atlanta. Um, so on the right, we have another big opportunity that you have as a student, and that is to compete within our case competitions. So in these competitions, you work with your team to solve a company's real world problem and then present on it to a panel. So our team often does very well placing usually within the top three. Now, one thing I should also mention is that these case competitions often come with the cash prize if you do place. So keep that in mind. So now let's take a little bit, take a look at the curriculum. So if you take a look at this slide, 
The MBA program is essentially 42 credit hours. And if you're not familiar with the credit hour system, one course is three credit hours. So 42 credit hours translates to 14 courses of which 10 are required and four are electives. So if you look at the individual boxes listed here, we've broken it down for ease of understanding. We've grouped courses in a certain way. Cornerstone core, which you see on the left, is four classes that represent the environment of a business, but not necessarily functional areas in a business. So for instance, a course on global economics, a course on um, financial statements, uh, so financial and managerial accounting, essentially an introduction, um, a course on the on analytics, and a course in business law. So as an example, law and analytics are not necessarily departments in a business, uh, but they are fundamental things that every executive needs to understand. If you go to, over to the next set, which is the functional core, this is traditionally what every business has as their functional areas, their departments typically. And these include uh, information systems, marketing, finance, operations, uh, and I may have forgotten one or two. So there's there's one, there's a leadership and organizational behavior kind of class in there. So when you combine those, those nine courses end up making, uh, con constituting the core of your MBA. And when you're done with those, you can you are eligible to take the capstone course which is a course in corporate strategy where you learn to put everything you learn in these nine courses together in order to analyze a business come up with a business plan or some such thing and then in the yellow in the middle you see the four elective courses that you are also required to take i mean they are electives in the sense you're you are required to take four classes but you can choose which four you take from a list of available classes and that in a nutshell, makes up your MBA, right? Now, to give you a little more detail, if, the next slide, there we go. Um, you have, starting the fall of 24, we have a face, our traditional face-to-face -face MBA program, but we also now have an online program available. And so if you were to choose the online program, uh, the only major is the default major of business administration. And you can choose from a list of electives that we have available to you online at this time. The online program does not have the vast array of concentrations that our face-to-face -face program does, but you can still choose the online program and will still have a choice of uh, electives, maybe six, eight, or 10 electives from which you choose the four. Um, if you're in the face-to-face -face program, you have a choice of two different majors. A business administration major, again, which is the default major, which will allow you to take multiple concentrations within that major. And the second option is a business analysis major, which is considered a STEM program. This is of, a, of special um, benefit to international students because a STEM designation uh, has implications for the extension of your visa for work purposes after after your degree is complete. Uh, but here are the two different majors that we do offer, and I'll explain a little bit about each one of them. So if you look at the business administration major, we offer over 15. We have listed 15 here. There are a couple more. We offer 15 plus concentrations that are available. So the concentrations are typically the four elective courses that you're required to take. So if you were to choose a concentration in accounting, for instance, the Department of Accounting will have a list of four classes that you must take in order to qualify for a concentration in accounting. And those four will count as your four electives within the MBA program. And likewise with any one of these others. So you have plenty of choice here of concentrations. And in addition to these, we also have three different graduate certificate programs. Uh, they also function very much like concentrations in the sense that each one has requires you to take four classes. So if you were to choose artificial intelligence innovation as a certificate program, essentially that, re that certification requires you to take four classes. Uh, one class called Innovation Studio Experience is common to all three of these certificates, but each certificate then has three additional classes that you take to make up your group of four. 
So again, you can choose one of these instead of a concentration. And the only difference is that a concentration shows up on your transcript, whereas these certificates don't show up on your transcript, but you get a separate cert certificate that said that you completed a program in artificial intelligence innovation or fintech innovation, et cetera. Um, but in terms of satisfying the MBA requirements, it works exactly the same way. You take four classes in that particular area in order to satisfy your electives. So you can choose to focus on the either one of these certificate areas or a concentration, or if you want to keep it completely open, you can choose what's called the general business concentration. And that allows you to pick any four electives from the College of Business, from any area that you choose. So you can mix and match as you wish in order to pick the electives that you want. And your concentration will simply be called general business. Now, if you choose the second major, which is the STEM program or the MBA in business analysis, then you are restricted to four specific classes in that, that are analytics related. To be, to be to qualify as STEM, they have to be either information systems or mathematics related classes or quantitative classes. And so this major in business analysis requires you to take uh, four classes as mentioned on this slide. So you will take three classes that are listed there, business intelligence, data mining, and business modeling. And then you can choose one additional course from a list of other possible classes. All of these are either quantitative in nature or related to information technology. And that that is that is how they qualify for the STEM program. In addition to the to the basics of the MBA program, one, one thing that might interest you is that if you choose quality management, which is a course in our management department, MGT 8760, as you see at the bottom, if you choose that course as one of your four electives and successfully pass that with a B or better grade, then you will automatically qualify for a green belt certification in Lean Six Sigma. You don't have to do anything else beyond that. So all you do is take that class and you will be awarded a green belt in Lean Six Sigma. And that itself has a fairly strong value. So those of you that are interested in operations management or that kind of area and want to improve your qualifications, this is one option that comes for free. Traditionally, when we offered the green belt certification, we, we would charge close to $2,000 for it. And within the MBA program, you can essentially get it for free if that's your inclination. It's not something that's required, of course. Now, to talk about program structure and the fees and other, other aspects, I will turn it back to Liz. All right, so here we have the format of the program. So this program can be completed face-to-face -face or online. So we do have three intakes that you can apply for. And that's going to be the fall, the spring, or the summer cycle. So as we mentioned before, the program is a 42 credit hour program and can typically take a student an average of 16 months to 24 months to complete. Now the program is self-paced and you often have up to five years to complete the program. Now classes are held in person, if they're held in person, I should say, they're held Monday through Thursday. Um, Classes are going to be once a week from 4.30 to 7 p.m. or 7.15 to 9.45 p.m. Now, those are going to be your traditional 16-week classes that could take from August to December or from January to May. We do also offer mini master classes. Now, these are classes that are eight-week sessions. So remember the traditional semester 16 weeks, it would be half of that. So it'd be an eight-week. And again, these classes would be once a week and held from 5.30 to 9.45. Now, if you have interest in other programs that you would like to take it a step further and get another master's for, we do offer dual degree programs. So you can do a dual degree in an MBA and a JD. So if you're interested in law school, you can do that. Or you can do an MBA with a master's in health administration, so an MBA with an MHA. Or you can do all three and do the MBA, MHA, or add the JD. We also offer an MBA with an MS in analytics. So now the way that this process works is that you would have to apply to both degree programs. So you would have to gain admission to both programs 
or to all three. Um, as a dual degree, you would complete the degree in less time than it would take you to do them separately. So in essence, it would just compress the time that it takes to complete both degrees. Now let's take a deeper look into how we evaluate your application. So we are essentially looking at these two areas for your potential for success into the program. And those two areas are gonna be your academic work and aptitude, as well as your experience and your leadership potential. So starting at the top, we'll take a look at your past academic work by taking a look at your transcripts. So we wanna see how you have performed. So with that being said, we do require all undergraduate and graduate school transcripts of universities that you have attended. Now, if you're an international student, all you have to do is upload all your transcripts and our team will evaluate them. If you require a professional evaluation for international students, we will then let you know after our team has evaluated them. Additionally, for international students, we do also require that all transcripts are in English. So if your transcripts are not, we do ask that you have them converted to English. Now, one thing that I wanna highlight in this area is your quantitative ability. The MBA curriculum is gonna be half quantitative, which is your math ability and half qualitative. So we wanna make sure that you can prove your quantitative ability within your transcript or somewhere else in your application. Now, one way that you can prove your quantitative ability is through the GRE or GMAT. Now, the GRE or GMAT test scores are not required at this time, but we do give you an option to upload them in your application. And again, it's a great way to show your quantitative ability if you are unable to show that elsewhere. And now we do request your resume so that we can see your work experience. So I ask that you highlight all your internships, your job experiences, your leadership experience, any relevant skills that you may have. Make sure you add the location and the dates. Next we have is the personal statement, which should be no more than 700 words. Now this allows us to learn more about you, what your goals are, why the Robinson College of Business, and what are you bringing into this program? Please make sure that it is proofread and make sure that someone other than yourself proofreads your essay also. Next we have letters of recommendation. Keep in mind that these are not required. However, I would recommend providing either a professional or an academic recommendation. Now, one thing that's on here that I wanna highlight is that if you are an international student, we do have language proficiency exams. Now, these scores are required or we do not accept Duolingo scores. We do have minimum scores that we like to see. So for the TOEFL, we like to see above a 90 and for the IELTS, we like to see above a 6.5 or higher. And if you're from an English speaking country, we do have a list of countries that are exempt online. You can also try and get it, um, this requirement waived if you have lived, worked, or studied in an English speaking country for over three years. So for example, if you studied in the US and you're from Mexico, you can try and get that proficient language proficiency waived. And last but not least is gonna be your interview. So everyone that is accepted into the MBA has to complete a live interview, it's virtual, with one of the members of my team. Now this interview is usually a quick interview and it will uh, I will ask you questions about your application or just some general business school interview questions to assess your ability in this program, okay? So let's take a look at our uh, the cost of the program. So here we have our investment summary. So the cost for the program for domestic students that have lived in Georgia is about $43,650. For out-of-state or international residents, it is about $48,000. And again, this is the cost of the entire program. Now, you are not required to pay all of that at once. You would pay that person on a per semester basis based on the number of credit hours you're taking that semester. Now, there is a seat deposit fee of $250 that is applied towards your total tuition cost, but it is required to be paid within 30 days of receiving your admissions decision if you do decide that you want to accept your seat. Now, I recommend that you put that seat deposit as soon as possible, because once you do so, you will have access to all the information that you need to be a student here at the Robinson College of Business.
And that's going to include information to registration and to the job portal. It will all start coming your way once you pay that seed deposit. Now, probably the most important question or the one that is most asked by students is about how to finance their degree. So the Graduate Student Financial Services is going to help out with any federal student aid, any grad plus loans, and any private education loans. So we have their, their email as well as their phone number. Now we do have some scholarship options. So we do offer some merit-based scholarships for students. Every person who applies is considered. These are limited and highly competitive. And they're usually awarded to individuals with substantially high GPAs and that provide a very competitive GMAT GRE score. Now, the other merit-based scholarship is our graduate research assistantship position, which is our largest type of award. These positions will provide a portion of your tuition, and in most cases, a stipend. They do not cover all tuition or all fees, but they are the highest award that we offer. So in addition to that stipend, you would all be required to work uh, anywhere from 12 to 16 hours a week. And the type of work will be dependent on the type of department that you work for. And you do have to maintain a certain level of grades. So when you apply, you're automatically considered. We take a look at your background, your academics, your test scores, all of that goes into consideration. Now, if you don't receive one with your decision letter, you can apply to them separately. We do have different postings from departments from all over the campus for faculty that are looking to hire graduate assistantships. So in that graduate assistantship role, you can either be doing research or administrative duties. Last but not least, we do have some department-specific scholarships, but those are usually awarded after your first semester. So I always recommend doing well that first semester so that you can apply to more scholarships. Next, let's take a look at our deadlines. So we do have different rounds, and I always encourage students to apply sooner rather than later. The sooner you apply, the less of an applicant pool that you are competing with, as opposed to when you apply later, you have a bigger applicant pool that you are comp competing with. If you're an international student, I do want to highlight um, the March deadline that is for international students, because we do recognize that um, the visa process can take a while and looks very differently for everyone. So we want you to have enough time to get your application reviewed, to um, get your decision, and to do all the paperwork necessary for you to do to come to study here in Atlanta. So now we do have the option to connect with a current student. So here, if you scan your QR code, you're able to chat with any of our current students. If you wanna ask them any questions about their perspective in the program, you may get better answers from them, from current students within any of the programs. If you're in between programs, you can always talk to them as well. Um, this is a great way for you to connect with those current students. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for joining um, and learning more about the MBA program. We appreciate it. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. My email is lrivera17 at gsu.edu. Thank you so much and have a lovely day, everyone.